The Browns suck. Um, we all knew that, though. But I thought we would just, like, reiterate a little bit. Uh, you want to get us started on this at all? Right. And the Browns, with the tough loss on Christmas Day, they lost 24-22 to the Green Bay Packers in Lambeau Field. You mentioned the Browns suck. I think that's a little unfair. There's one Brown that really sucks, and that's Baker Mayfield. He threw four interceptions. Three of them were absolutely terrible throws, terrible reads, just, just battle around the board. The Browns as a team actually played really well. Running game defense, you know, solid job. Good job out of that offensive line up front for Cleveland. But Maker Mayfield stunk all game long. He ended up throwing away his fourth interception of the game, sealed the victory for Green Bay. Right now, Cleveland Browns, with one of the more talented rosters in the NFL, are 7-8, and eight, last place in the AFC North. Nick, I mean, you're do you, being do you a little unfair to our friend Baker Mayfield. If he was on a team that possibly had two Pro Bowl caliber running backs – Pro Bowl caliber receiver, maybe a Pro Bowl tight end caliber, a pretty solid offensive line, a possible defensive player of the year candidate, edge rusher, a solid safety or two, a good linebacker, then I would say, okay, all of this hate is warranted. But he couldn't possibly have a team that good. Obviously, you're being facetious because he has that and more. I mean, ever since he came into the league, the Browns have surrounded Baker with whatever he wanted and everything he needed. And I and I just jotted down a quick list here. This isn't even everything. So this is after a second year in the NFL, right? The Cleveland Browns promoted his play caller, Freddie Kitchens, to head coach. That was a disaster. They traded for Odell Beckham Jr. That didn't work out. They traded for Kareem Hunt. That, you know, still Baker sucks. They traded for Wyatt Teller, one of those Pro Bowl offensive linemen you talked about. Still Baker can't get it done. They signed offensive tackle Jack Conklin from Tennessee. Great offensive lineman, was named to a Pro Bowl All-Pro guy. Baker still can't get it done. They drafted another offensive lineman, uh, Jedrick Willis, with a top-10 pick two years ago, and they signed Austin Hooper, a Pro Bowl tight end from, uh, from the Atlanta Falcons. Literally, the Cleveland Browns have done everything to surround Baker Mayfield with quality talent at wide receiver, at tight end, at running back and offensive line, and they've given him his preferred play caller. They even have an offensive-minded head coach and uh, Kevin Stefanski in Cleveland, and Baker Mayfield still can't get it done. It, this is such a disappointment. I, you know, there's been a lot of bad busts in NFL history with guys who have ab- absolutely stunk. I think we have to put in some context here that Baker can't get it done despite having the greatest structure around him in the NFL by far. Like it's I've This never is seen way it. different than us bashing the Jets – and uh, Zach Wilson, because Zach Wilson, the Jets suck, and his coach probably sucks, and the team around him really isn't good. Can you name a good Jets wide receiver? I really can't think of too many that they have. I can't think of too many good offensive weapons or defensive weapons they really have, period. You know, he's got everything. Uh, It was a bad team when he got there, but they have turned it around into a good team with good pieces and the only bad piece is him yeah you bring up a good point with zach wilson the jets right justin fields trevor lawrence a lot of these young quarterbacks they come into the league and even after a few years right you know there's some other guys uh that have had some struggles since they've come to the year they don't have the structure and support around them and i know i did a little research and i did some digging and i was trying to figure out what were good comparisons to what baker mayfield has around him in cleveland and two guys came to mind that's what Dak Prescott, you know, got has in Dallas and got in Dallas coming to the NFL and what Patrick Mahomes has. Both Prescott and Mahomes have offensive minded head coaches and quality offensive coordinators. Both Prescott and Mahomes, like Mayfield, you know, have been surrounded with quality wide receivers, quality offensive linemen, and good running backs and teams that are willing to draft, trade, and sign those kind of players to support the quarterbacks. And there you can see as, you know, you look at the numbers there, right, as we put them up on the screen, as they're up on the screen, just how bad Mayfield has been in comparison with those two guys. Like, he is – when you look at wins and losses, both Prescott and Mahomes, blow them out of the water. You look at passer rating, not even close. Touchdown interception ratio, not even close. Look at that big goose egg in division titles, zero. Prescott just clinched his second. Mahomes has won three in a row. I'd like to no. point something out, too. Prescott has more wins than Mayfield, and he missed, like, all of last season. Well, I will say this. I, we, we took out last year from these numbers with Prescott because of the injury. So I didn't want to. Fair enough. Not, yeah, so that would have made the numbers look a little different. So, But even then, right, it, it's, it's leaps and bounds different, right? You look at 
Mayfield is so about 92 ish, 90, 92 is average for NFL passer rating. Baker with all those talents is below average, right? He had Jarvis Landry, Odell Beckham, Austin Hooper, Pro Bowl offensive line, offensive minded head coach and coordinator, and he still is below average. Like it, it's, it is such a, a situation that's gone down south in Cleveland really, really fast. I think Kevin Stefanski, the head coach, I'm curious your thoughts on this. I think the right move for Cleveland at this point, you know, I don't, you know, if they're really serious about winning, I think they have to make a quarterback switch. They're not. Stefanski has already said they're sticking with Mayfield. At this point, you got to show your team that you're serious and a contender. Because when you look at these numbers, NFL players aren't dumb. They see what Prescott has done. They see what Mahomes has done. They've seen what other young quarterbacks have done with even less talent. Mayfield isn't even close. I mean, could Kevin Stefanski face a revolt on his hands if he doesn't make a change and Cleveland misses the playoffs? I think if Cleveland misses the playoffs, uh, everyone, owner, GM, and coach need to sit down. They need to say, hey, look, apples to apples. Let's look at our team versus the divi- whoever wins the division in the AFC North, okay? Let's look at our, our team. Apples to apples. We have by far the best team in the AFC North, and it's not even close. We have the most talent on our roster, and we can't make it happen. So, th- this is the thing we've been hindered at the quarterback position. We need to seriously consider making a switch. And I'm not, okay, if you want to be like, oh, we gave a first overall pick for Mayfield, like we got to stick with him, that's fine. Okay, first round pick for Mayfield, I get it. You want to. Protect your investment. You're a big fan of sunk cost fallacy. You don't want to go with the Cardinals route where you get a guy, he sucks, and you move on from him and get another guy, and it ends up working out really well for you for the most part. Um, they need to at least bring in a guy, like a second or third round quarterback they bring in, and have a competition. They need to you know, at least push Baker to be better and I think they'll find that he's not going to be better and that they need to move on with the person that they've selected. But I think they need to pick a challenger to Mayfield, whether it's through free agency signing, like Gardner Menchu, someone we love, or whether they draft a mid-round quarterback to come in and uh, give him a little bit of a push and see if he can handle it. Yeah, I, and, and I agree for the offseason. That's the move Cleveland definitely has to go. I, I think if you're a Browns fan, though, you have to be so frustrated and disappointed with Baker and the Browns because it's not every year in that division where the Ravens are going to be decimated by injuries like no one's ever seen before. Yeah, it's it's true. not. Joe Burrow and the Bengals are young. They're going to get better. They're you scary. Know, the, They're legitimately the receiving core of the Bengals has me very frightened for the next couple of years because they're coming at, they're turning out to be bona fide superstars, all of them. Yeah, um, yeah, you're exactly right. They're, I mean, the, the Bengals are, are, are legitimate. The Steelers are down, but if, if they get another quarterback to come in for Roethlisberger, I think Tomlin's a good enough coach. Maybe they can turn that around. This was a golden opportunity for Cleveland. It really was, and Baker Mayfield, through his poor play, has let that organization down. Not even down. They're in last place. Last place. Last Absolutely. place, Ravens decimated by injuries, Steelers who have a uh, mummy as a quarterback, and the Bengals who are a young organization, young coach who really shouldn't have an option, have now walked themselves into first place in the division. Like, what are you doing, Cleveland? And oh, one quick thing, uh, a tidbit I've heard, and this could be completely false, but uh, rumors around the Pittsburgh mill is that Pittsburgh coaches and GMs have had quite an interest in Ravens second string quarterback Tyler Huntley as a possible prospect to bring into uh, Pittsburgh next year. So let's keep an eye out for that. Yeah, definitely. I, th- I think the AFC North is 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 going to be an eye opening position for quarterback moves in the offseason, and it should start really with Cleveland and moving on from Baker Mayfield.